Okay, so we're diving deep today. Deep, deep. Into this uh, this one event in Iran yeah. that, that's really kind of capturing the energy there, you know, it's especially after Masa Amini's death. I mean, you're probably following all the protests and everything, but this is <laughs> this is different. It really is. It happened at Azad University's Science and Research Center in Tehran. And it's a story about, I don't know, it's about what happens when defiance meets a system that just... That just can't handle it? Yeah, can't handle it at oh, all. No. Yeah, so it's a story that starts with this confrontation over the mandatory hijab. But as you'll see, it, it gets much bigger than that. Way bigger. Oh, yeah. We're talking public stripping, arrest, the whole thing spiraled. Out of control. Out of control. And then... And then conflicting stories about the student's mental state classic classic okay so it's a mess yeah help me unpack this what actually happened so the initial incident it was brutal campus security forces they physically attacked this female student because she wasn't wearing a hijab eyewitnesses they said they saw her clothes being torn this wasn't like some polite request this was an assault so this is already intense oh yeah and how did she react her response incredible she chose to remove the rest of her clothes and then she sat down outside the campus, basically in her underwear. Wow. Yeah, this wasn't about clothing anymore. This was a statement. She used her own body in this incredibly raw, vulnerable way. I can only imagine the impact. Oh, it was electric. No. The other students, they were stunned. They started filming on their phones. They captured the raw emotion, the tension. But here's where it gets really interesting. Think about other historical moments where people have used their bodies as a form of protest. Gandhi's hunger strikes, the sit-ins during the civil rights movement. This act, it taps into something deep in our human understanding of resistance. That's a really great point. It's like her body becomes the symbol, this undeniable statement that can't be ignored. So how do the authorities react to this? Things escalated and they escalated quickly. About 10 security guards, they forcibly detained her. They just bundled her into a vehicle. The video footage that's been circulating online, it captures the chaos, the shock of the onlookers. You can hear them shouting things like, oh my God, how many of them are attacking just one person? And I can't believe what I'm seeing. Yeah. It's scary stuff. It's chilling. Do we have any more details about what led up to the arrest? Like what? Yeah, there are eyewitness accounts that paint a clearer picture. One witness describes seeing her being grabbed near the entrance of the faculty building. Security forces tore her hoodie during the struggle. And that's when she decided to remove the rest of her clothing in protest. Then, according to the witness, she was ambushed by plainclothes officers and forced into a car. Sounds chaotic and terrifying. What about her condition afterward? Was she hurt? Student media reported injuries. They said severe head trauma from being struck against the vehicle. Some witnesses even mentioned seeing traces of blood at the scene. This is awful. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like even amidst all of this, she's become a symbol of resistance. Absolutely. The footage of the protest has gone viral in Iran. She's being hailed as this symbol of defiance under the hashtag girl of science and research. Social media is flooded with messages of support. One user wrote, if courage had a face. Another posted, that brave girl is my leader. That's incredibly powerful. But here's where things get even more complicated. The university is pushing a completely different narrative, right? Completely different. Yeah. Amir Majoub, the director of public relations at Azad University, he claimed that the student was under, quote unquote, severe mental stress and was transferred to a police station. Mm. The Farhai Tadigan newspaper, which is tied to the university, went even further, citing unnamed sources claiming she had severe psychological and mental issues and was hospitalized in a psychiatric facility. So they're trying to discredit her. Oh, absolutely. And her actions. Yeah. This tactic, sadly, it's one we've seen before. Accusations of mental illness have long been used to silence dissent, particularly when it comes from women. It's a way to undermine their credibility and make people question their motives. It's a pattern. It's everywhere throughout history. And it's especially concerning here because, well, we still don't know where she is or how she's doing. Yeah. Amnesty International has called for her immediate and unconditional release, but there's been no response. Hmm. This lack of transparency, it's really worrying. It raises questions about the university's intentions and the treatment of individuals who dare to challenge the status quo. This is the first time we've seen this kind of defiance in Iran, though, right? Oh, absolutely not. Remember, the girl of Ingolab Street, Vita Movahed. Back in 2017, she became a symbol of resistance after she removed her headscarf and held it aloft on a stick in protest. These acts, they may seem small, but they're incredibly brave in a repressive regime like Iran. 
They're a reminder that even in a society where so much is controlled, individuals still find ways to resist, to make their voices heard. It's so powerful. Yeah. It makes me think about what drives someone to take a stand like that, knowing the consequences. You know, what pushes someone to that point? Think of it like this. If you're constantly told what to wear, what to think, how to behave, it creates this immense pressure, a feeling of being stifled. It's a denial of basic human needs, autonomy, dignity, the right to express yourself. At some point, something has to give. And for some people, that breaking point comes in the form of public defiance. It's like reclaiming their agency, their right to exist on their own terms. Exactly. And that's what makes it so resonant. It's raw. It's authentic. It speaks to something deep within us that yearns for freedom. And it's happening against this backdrop of Masa Amini's death and the protests that followed. Universities are facing even more repression, but women and girls are still defying those mandatory hijab laws. It's a tense situation. Oh, incredibly. <laughs> to say the least. And it's important to understand the context here, right? The government is trying to crack down even harder with these stricter laws, harsher punishments for what they deem improper clothing. Yeah, we're talking bans on leaving the country, social media restrictions, immediate arrest for dress code violations. It's a lot. Wow. It's yeah. a frightening escalation of control over personal freedoms. But even despite that, there's still this sense of hope, a belief Mm. that things can change. You can feel it in the words of one Tehran student who spoke to the Telegraph. They said, these girls will one day bring down Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. Iran's future belongs to free women, not the mullahs. Wow, that's powerful that, stuff. That's a powerful statement. And they added, talking about the student specifically, they said, she'll be remembered as a hero by many women. After this regime falls, her picture will be everywhere in Iran, like Masa Amini's and many more. It speaks to the lasting impact of her defiance, the inspiration she's given to others. It really makes you think, doesn't it? Yeah. What would it take for you to make that kind of stand? What does true courage look like when you're facing this kind of oppression? Yeah. It's okay. it's a question we should all be asking ourselves. Big questions. They are. And it's really, it's interesting because it's happening on this global scale now, too. Yeah. People all over the world, they're looking at Iran, they're looking at these women, and I think they're realizing... Yeah that maybe our own freedoms aren't as secure as we thought they were. That's a really good point. It's easy to feel removed from these kinds of events when they're happening halfway across the world. But the thing is, yeah. they do have ripple effects. And the fact that this happened on a university campus, that adds another layer to the story. It does. Historically, universities have always been these breeding grounds for dissent. Right. for challenging the status quo. Young people, they come together, they share ideas, they question authority. Right. So when something like this happens on a campus, it tells you that the desire for change, it runs deep. Right. It's not just a fringe movement or something. Right. It's woven into the fabric of the place. Absolutely. And it makes the government's reaction even more telling. You know, oh, for sure. It's not just silencing this one student. Right. They're trying to clamp down on that whole spirit of dissent. Exactly. These new laws they're pushing, they're not just about controlling what women wear. It's about controlling information, controlling expression. It's about maintaining power, even if it means resorting to fear and intimidation. And yet, as we've seen, that kind of repression can often backfire. It can even create this, uh, have you ever heard of the Streisand effect? Of course. It's like when you try to suppress something, yeah. you just end up drawing more attention to it. It's named after Barbara Streisand, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Back in 2003, she tried to suppress this aerial photo of her Malibu mansion. And the lawsuit she filed, well, it ended up making the photo go viral. Wow. It's almost a law of the internet at this point. The harder you try to hide something, yeah. the more people want to see it. It makes sense. <laughs> and in today's world, with social media amplifying everything, mm -hmm. it's almost impossible to control the narrative anymore. Right. This student's protest, the images, the videos, the messages of support, it's all out there for the world to see. It is. And that's a double-edged sword, of course. Mm. Social media can be this incredible tool for activism, for spreading awareness, for mobilizing people. Right. But it also comes with risks. The same platforms that can amplify voices can also be used to spread misinformation, to right. harass and intimidate people, to surveil them. So how do we navigate that? How do we use these tools safely and effectively? That's the million dollar question. Yeah. It's an ongoing conversation. I think a big part of it comes down to media literacy, being critical of what we see online, 
checking sources, being aware of the potential biases and agendas at play. It's like we all need to become detectives in a way. Yeah. Sifting through all this information, trying to figure out what's real and what's been manipulated. And that's where critical thinking comes in. Being able to analyze information, to question assumptions, to consider different perspectives. These are essential skills for navigating the digital age. It's about empowering ourselves to be informed citizens Absolutely. to participate in these conversations in a meaningful way. Exactly. Because ultimately it's these conversations, these exchanges of ideas that drive progress. So as we delve deeper into this story, as we try to understand all the complexities of what's happening in Iran, it's important to keep that in mind. It's not just about one student, one protest. It's about a larger struggle for freedom, for human rights, for the right to self-determination. It's about the future of Iran and who gets to shape it. And even though the path ahead, it's uncertain, we can take inspiration from the courage and resilience of the Iranian people, particularly women. They continue to push for change, even in the face of immense pressure. This student's act of defiance, it's incredibly powerful. But what strikes me is the aftermath, the way the university tried to control the narrative. They claimed she was under severe mental stress even suggested she was hospitalized for psychiatric issues. That's a tactic we've seen it so many times. Over and over. Not just in Iran. Or around the world. But around the world. Yeah. When authorities feel threatened by dissent, they often resort to, well, discrediting the individual, mm. questioning their sanity yeah. or stability. It's a way to silence them, yeah. to make people dismiss their message. And sadly, yeah. it can be pretty effective. It can. There's still a lot of stigma surrounding mental health, and it's easy for people to buy into that narrative. For sure. It's crucial to recognize this tactic for what it is, a way to deflect attention from the real issues. Instead of addressing the student's concerns, the university chose to attack her character, to undermine her credibility. And that speaks volumes about the power dynamics at play. It does. They're not interested in dialogue, in understanding the root cause of the protest. They just want to maintain control, even if it means resorting to these kinds of tactics. It's like a classic example of how authoritarian regimes operate. They see any form of dissent as a threat, and they use whatever means necessary to just quash it. So it's like trying to hold back the tide. You can't. You can't. And that's where the power of social media comes in, I think. It's created this space where these stories can be told, where evidence can be shared, where people can connect and organize. It's become a vital tool for holding power to account. But it's not without its risks. We've seen how social media can also be used to spread misinformation, to harass and intimidate people even to surveil them. So the question becomes... Yeah, how do we navigate that? How do we use these tools safely and effectively? That's the challenge, isn't it? It requires us to be these discerning consumers of information, to check sources, to be aware of potential biases, to recognize propaganda when we see it. That's like we all need to become, I don't know, more media literate, more like critical thinkers. Exactly. We need to be able to analyze information, to question assumptions, to consider different perspectives. These are essential skills for navigating the digital age. And they're especially important when it comes to understanding complex situations like the one in Iran. So as we continue to follow this story, as we try to make sense of the protests and the government's response, it's important to keep these things in mind. It's not just about one student, one incident. No. It's about a larger struggle for freedom. Yeah. For human rights, for the right to self-determination. And it's a struggle that's happening in many different forms in many different parts of the world. We see it in the fight for democracy in Hong Kong, in the Black Lives Matter movement in the United States, in the push for LGBTQ plus rights globally. These are all interconnected struggles. They are. Each one pushing back against these systems of oppression and injustice. And while the context may differ, the underlying themes are so similar. Oh, yeah. It's about challenging power structures. Absolutely. Demanding accountability. Yes. Fighting for a more just and equitable world. And it's a fight that requires courage, resilience, a willingness to speak truth to power. The student at Azad University, she embodies all of those qualities. She does. She reminds us that even when you're facing this immense pressure, individuals can choose to resist. Yeah. To stand up for what they believe in. Her act of defiance is this powerful symbol of hope and inspiration. It is. Not just for the people of Iran, but for all of us who believe in a better future. And as we continue to follow this story, let's not forget that larger context, right. the interconnected nature of these struggles. Let's be mindful of the tactics used to discredit dissent, to silence voices, to maintain the status quo. Yeah, let's equip ourselves with the tools of critical thinking. 
media literacy so we can participate in these conversations in a meaningful way. And most importantly, let's draw inspiration from those who dare to resist. Yes. Who stand up for their rights. Yeah. Who fight for a more just and equitable world. Yeah. Because their struggles are our struggles. They are. And their victories are our victories. Absolutely. That's a powerful thought to end on. This deep dive, it's been truly eye-opening, and it's left me with a lot to think about. So much to think about, really. Yeah. And while we've talked about the larger context, you know, the political climate in Iran, the global fight for women's rights, right? I keep finding myself going back to that first moment of defiance. Yeah. What was going through her head as she stood there? Like, what made her choose to make that statement? It's hard to know for sure. Yeah. But I think we can learn something from the psychology of protest. Okay. It's often about reclaiming agency in a situation where you feel powerless. Right. Imagine the frustration, the anger, the feeling of being constantly controlled, told what to wear, what to think, how to behave. At some point, it's almost like a pressure valve releases. And in this case, it was her body, her clothing that became that focal point. Exactly. It's a powerful statement, especially in a society where women's bodies are so heavily policed, where their clothing is seen as the symbol of morality and social order. Mm. By removing her garments, she's not just defying a dress code. Right. She's challenging the very foundations of that control. It's like she's saying, my body is my own and I will not be dictated to. Exactly. And that message, it resonates on a primal level. It does. It taps into our instinctive desire for autonomy, yeah. for freedom of expression. It's interesting because in a way, it's the most personal form of protest. Right. Yeah. Using your own body as this canvas for your message. Right. But at the same time, it becomes this incredibly public act with huge potential consequences. It's a paradox. The personal becomes political in this really dramatic way. Yeah. And I think that's what makes this story so compelling. It forces us to confront these uncomfortable questions about the limits of our own freedoms, the compromises we make, the lines we're willing to cross. It's like that quote we mentioned earlier <laughs> about how these girls will one day bring down the Ayatollah. Right. It speaks to the power of these seemingly small acts of defiance, like they can chip away at these oppressive systems. And it reminds us that change, it often starts at the individual level. Yeah. It starts with people like this student who are willing to take a stand to speak truth to power. Even when it's dangerous. Especially when it's dangerous. And it's important to remember she's not alone. No. There are countless others in Iran and around the world who are fighting for their rights, for their freedom, their stories. They may not always make headlines, but they are no less important. Every act of resistance, it all contributes to a larger movement for change. Absolutely. So as we reach the bottom of this deep dive, I'm left with this sense of awe at the student's courage and this renewed commitment to paying attention to these stories, to amplifying the voices of those who are fighting for a better world. It's easy to feel overwhelmed by the scale of these challenges. It is. But it's important to remember that even small actions can make a difference. Supporting human rights organizations, raising awareness on social media, engaging in thoughtful conversations. These are all ways to contribute to positive change. And it all starts with staying informed. Yes. Yeah. With being curious, with asking questions, with never taking our own freedoms for granted. That's a powerful thought to end on. The world is full of complexities and challenges, but it's also full of incredible people who are working to make it a better place. Let's learn from their stories. Let's be inspired by their courage. And let's find ways to contribute to the ongoing struggle for a more just and equitable world. Thank you for taking this deep dive with us. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and stay engaged.